Hallelujah. Bless your name, O Lord. King of the universe, ruler of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Lord, Heavenly Father, right now we just acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your glory right now. And we give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Oh, Lord, right now, I pray, allow us to decrease so that you may increase. Lord, anoint my lips of clay that I may be an oracle of God. Let nothing I say be of earthly wisdom, but be of everything of heaven and the spirit. Oh, Lord, right now, Lord, possess my body by the Holy Spirit and use it in any way that you see fit. Lord. Hear the cry of our hearts right now, O oh Lord. We just want to be where you are right now. And Lord, we just delight in you. Lord, I pray that you will just have your way, O oh Lord. Prepare the people's hearts and minds to believe and receive with us, saith the Lord. O oh Lord, wash us right now in your blood. Make us clean before you right now. May the words of your gospel penetrate into our hearts, into our bones, all the way down into the cellular structure. Let us come align with what is written in heaven. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Thank you and praise you. It's in Yeshua's mighty and precious name. I do pray, and my prayer partners and friends said with me, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. I am so excited about today, and I'll tell you why. I am excited because the Lord told me something very important, and I want everybody to understand this. Because what the Lord told me to do, the Lord told me that I had to do something a little different with um, with my teachings and with what I preach. And I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And this is what the Lord told me. And this is what I am to do. The Lord even told me, don't tell anybody what you're doing. But he said, back to basics. That's what he told me. He said, go back to basics. And I said, okay. I said, well, Lord, what does that mean? What does back to basics mean? Let me explain to you what's about to happen and why we're going back to basics. The Lord began to show me and tell me, he said, Simba, there's a lot of people that when they got saved, they, you know, they got a Bible, they got this, they got that, but they missed some very important information. And that is why a lot of believers, because they did not learn the basics of salvation, the basics of what they have received. The problem is now that now they don't walk in as much power as they should. They don't walk in as much authority. They have no idea what really has happened. And it's right there in the word of God. It's staring you right in the face, but people look at it and because they don't fully understand it, they cannot fully receive it. If you recall, I taught this before and I taught this many times. You cannot go into realms in the spirit without information. You can't know what it is. Like you can't receive something if you don't know what it is that you have received. God will not give it to you. Why? Because you will not understand the significance of what it is that you have been given. So he can't give it to you. So the Lord told me about the basics. This is what the Lord told me. He said for three months, he said, you will teach solely about the Holy Spirit. 
who the Holy Spirit is, and you will tell the people how to commune and fellowship with him. For three months, you will do this. I said, okay. The Lord dove into a little deeper. This is what he told me. He said, a deception I'm going to allow. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to allow a season where there will be deception. And the only way for the people to be protected is to learn this of which I am going to teach you for three months. The Lord said that when they learn this, he said, it's going to be like the Holy Spirit will be like the ark. The deception will be like the flood. He said, I am going to weed out who is truly teaching my word and who is teaching opinions, who are doing things off of political reasons and everything of the like. He said, this is going to be my process. Those who are under the shadow or the shelter of the Holy Spirit will not be deceived. I said, okay. And I was like, Lord, this is amazing. But I said, what else do you want me to say? Today, this is just the introduction, to be honest. The Lord told me, he said, Simba, for one part of this, you will preach. The other, you will show them how to go and commune with the, with the Holy Spirit. So that's why I said these videos, these teachings are going to be different. My intention is not to have you here listening to me preach for an hour. That is not my intention. The Lord said you will spend giving the information and then you will do an application of the information. Because you have to understand part of growing in the spirit is not just receiving the information, but when you are able to apply the information of which it was given. So the Lord says basically that your spiritual maturity is determined by how much you apply, not how much you know. I hope everybody's understanding that. So that's why the Lord told me that I have to teach you back to basics. Is everyone with me so far? I just need a thumbs up or whatever. It's okay. I know. But it's okay. Back to basics. So let me explain to you the basics of what the Lord taught. So let's go here. Matthew 6, 33. It says, what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the Lord did not say, Go seek a church first. Go seek a deacon first. Go seek this first. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. What are the things that will be added unto you? Things added unto you means, it means a plethora of things. If you don't know what your assignment on earth is, what your destiny, what your purpose, and all those things, if you seek the kingdom first, that thing will be added to you. Well, Lord, I can't do ministry because I, I'm lacking resources. Seek the kingdom first, those things will be added. Seek also means pursue, desire the kingdom. When you pursue and desire the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added unto you. A lot of people, they want to know their church assignment, their church mission first. I tell you the truth, it is upside down. God says, if you seek your kingdom purpose, kingdom identity, kingdom realm, you will have all that and more added unto you. Let me tell you something. I'm in all five offices in terms of the church. I'm in all five offices. I'm in the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor and the evangelist, but I was not in all of them at first. I started in two, but when the Lord started teaching me this, he said, if you literally pursue the kingdom first, if you become a king first, then literally what happens, I'll put you in the other realms with the knowledge of how to operate in the office. When I accepted the kingdom first, I was placed in the third office, the evangelist. I had no desire to share the gospel in other nations and other parts of the world. 
I didn't even know what an evangelist really was until I accepted the kingdom. Then the Lord placed me in the third office and he placed it in my heart, the desire and the knowledge of an evangelist. See, the thing is, everybody thinks they, they have to go to all these different places where the Lord literally says, if you just seek the kingdom first, I'll add it to you. Meaning I'll download it, I'll place it inside of your heart because your heart has a greater capacity to learn and understand the things of God than your mind. I know, Holy Spirit, get them revelation. But then that's not even the basic. That's a start of the basic. Because then the Lord said, what is the kingdom? I keep hearing people saying, what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? What does the kingdom even look like? This is why I have to teach you the Holy Spirit, because I'm going to show you some revelation. It says, yes, seek ye first the kingdom. But then look at what God, look at what it said next. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, what does it say? For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but it's righteousness and shalom and joy in the Ruha HaKadosh. Or translation, the kingdom is not eating or drinking. It's not, and eating and drinking, it, it also means what you learn or what you take in. Oh, Holy Spirit, give them revelation. I felt I felt the power of God on that one. But the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. It's not about how much you know or how much you learn. But it's about righteousness and shalom and joy and the Ruha HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit. So the Lord is saying right here, and this isn't the Lord. I know it's Paul, but you have to understand he's being led by the Spirit of God as he writes this. Kingdom of God is about righteousness, shalom, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, do you see where in the scripture it says in the Holy Spirit? It says in the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you something. And this is why the Lord wants me to teach this so much. When Yeshua taught on the earth, you have to understand he is being empowered by Yahweh. Yahweh or Yahweh literally means past, present, and future all at once. So sometimes when Yeshua is teaching and talking, he's referencing the past, present, and future all at the same time. I'll give you an example. When he's teaching, he says, if I cast out devils with the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then they ask, where is the kingdom? He says, the kingdom is in that's what he says. He says the kingdom is in you. But then you move forward. What does he say? The Holy Spirit that is around you will be in you. So why does he say that the Holy Spirit, why does he say the kingdom is in you? Why does he say that? The reason why he says that is because he's talking future. He, he's, he's talking future reference because they could not, they could receive the teaching of the kingdom, but they could not receive the fullness of the kingdom because the Holy Spirit had not come yet. So he said that the Holy Spirit that is around you will be in you. So he's talking present at that time. And then he's saying future, it will be in you. Because right here again, where does it say? For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but righteousness and shalom and joy in the Holy Spirit. So in order to have the fullness or the understanding of the kingdom, the Holy Spirit, this, this is the requirement. So then this is what the Lord began to show me. The Lord asked me a question. He said, where is the Holy Spirit? I said, well, he's inside of us. As soon as I accepted Christ, you received the Holy Spirit. He said, you answered correctly. And so where it says in, you must learn how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. Because when the Holy Spirit came upon you or came inside of you, when you accepted Christ, it said that it, it witnessed to my spirit 
when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit overtook my spirit. So the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, you must learn to have righteousness, shalom, and joy inside the Holy Spirit who is inside of you. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Who caught it? Who received it? That's why the Lord wants me to spend three months talking about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. That's what he means back to basic. You didn't even learn. You trying to learn all about Yeshua, who is up in heaven right now, and you're pursuing after that. But you don't know that as soon as you accepted Christ, separation from God was forever deterred because he gave his spirit inside of you. And you have to understand that the Holy Spirit who is inside of you will lead you into all truth, will lead you in the ways of Yeshua, will teach you the kingdom, will show you the kingdom, and will rebuild the kingdom of God that is in heaven inside of you. So you can be a proper vessel, a proper dwelling place for the Lord God Almighty. I know if you don't understand this now, you will understand it at the end of three months. I promise. <laughs> if you don't understand it now, you'll understand it at the end of three months. I promise. Oh, I just love the Lord so much. Isn't he amazing? So now let me break this down just a little bit. The kingdom of God is what? So number one, it's righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness means right, righteous, just, justice, accurate, fair, correct, impartial, equity, what is morally right. So what does that mean? Righteousness. So it says it is righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So what does righteousness mean? It means fair, correct, accurate, and morally right so what that means is when you listen to the holy spirit and you allow the holy spirit to take his proper place in your life you are not supposed to be running your life your life is supposed to be given to yeshua yeshua then places the holy spirit inside of you then you submit to the rule and authority of the holy spirit He is not your advisor that just tells you what to do. He is your source of righteousness. Righteousness also means, the word righteousness also means, that's why I place this here, it means the pathway. It means right. That's what that means by correct. It means right. It means going down the right path, going the right way. If you don't feel like you're going the right way, then you need to talk to the Holy Spirit who is inside of you. When you believe and trust God, it is also righteousness. For Abraham trusted and believed God and God accredited to him as righteousness. Right standing with God. I may make some mistakes along the way, but I thank God it is not predicated on my righteousness. It's, on, it's his righteousness. He is my righteousness. And so what that means, if I listen to him and I believe him and I believe his word, God accredited it to righteousness. If you listen to the Holy Spirit and you submit to the Holy Spirit, you will know the right way. The Bible says that you do not know into the way of God's presence, but the Holy Spirit knows the way into God's presence and presents access to it. Let me move on. So what is shalom? Shalom, I love this. Shalom means completeness, safety, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, quiet, tranquility, contentment, peace, friendship, human relationships. God, especially in covenant relationships, Peace from war. Peace as an adjective. So let me stop right here. So shalom, uh, the word that the Lord highlighted to me was friendship. So shalom means well-being 
it means safety. So that means your emotional welfare, everybody keeps talking about mental health. Mental health is such a big issue, especially now in the country where it wasn't before, but it is now. You, you know that that safety, that shalom also means protection of your mind and your heart. You do understand that, right? So the Lord literally said, I gave you the Holy Spirit so when, when you feel anxiety, when you feel depression, when you feel suicidal thoughts, when you feel those things, if you know how to commune and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he will give shalom or protection of your mind and your heart. Are you hearing this here? But you cannot have that if you don't have fellowship with him. That's why it says righteousness, shalom, meaning a friendship, a union, a friendship, a kinship, a complete or wholeness, meaning that the Holy Spirit doesn't just have part of you, he has all of you. Because when God gave you the Holy Spirit, he didn't give you a part of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, stop saying, to, people need to stop praying and saying, we want more of the Holy Spirit. The correct way is actually the Holy Spirit needs more of you. I'll write that down. It is not, Lord, we need more of your Holy Spirit because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, the entirety of who he is, came inside of you. The problem is, is does the Holy Spirit have all of you? Does he have your mind? Does he have your body? Does he have your heart? Does he have your finances? Does he have your family? Does he have your relationships? Are you hearing this here? I wonder, because here it is, Yeshua was so liked by the sinners. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why did the sinners like you so much, but the sinners don't like Christians today? And the Lord told me, it was so funny. He said, because they saw the Holy Spirit through me. They saw the love. I barely had to say anything. The Holy Spirit just shone through me. The Holy Spirit had the gateway to move through me. My question to all of you in the body of Christ as an apostolic and prophetic voice, does the Holy Spirit have full reign to move through you, around you, and out of you? Do people encounter the Holy Spirit when they meet you? Does the Holy Spirit even have permission to do that? Or do you want everybody to see you? Uh, I'm almost done, I promise. My last point right here. Woo. So, especially in covenant, friendship, okay. And then joy. Calm, delight, gladness, joy. Another word for this for joy is exhilaration. Have you ever, when, I know I get like that with pagas, I know I get like that when I study and I read the word of God, I get excited. There's, there's an exhil, it's exhilarating. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give that to you. The joy, the exhilaration. the cheerfulness, the gladness. See, the thing is, I learned something. The Lord showed me something and I'll share it with all of you. The Lord began to show me the, the joy of the Lord. The scripture says, the, um, the joy of the Lord shall be my what? Strength. That's what the scripture says. Do you have any idea what the joy of the Lord actually really is? Let me tell you, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. And I know some people are like, what do you mean it's a weapon? It's a weapon. Joy is a weapon. It's a spiritual warfare weapon. Write that down. 
Joy is a spiritual warfare weapon. Why? And, 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 and how does joy work? Has anyone ever felt, for some reason, like you were down, you were, like, like everything felt horrible, and then for some reason, you just started to laugh? There was like an outburst of joy. You have no idea where it came from. You just started to laugh. Let me tell you what that is. And I've experienced it a couple of times. Like, and my wife can attest to this. One time I was very stressed. I was very bad. And then I just started laughing. And she was like, what's so funny? I said, I have no idea. I just started laughing. Why did the Lord do that? Why did the Lord give me that joy? Why did I laugh? Do you know what God's judgment against the enemy is? See, everybody thinks God's judgment against the enemy is when he sends fire or when he's mad or when he's wrathful. The Bible says in Psalm 37, he laughs at the enemy. <laughs> it said his judgment, he laughs because he already sees what's going to happen to him. He already knows. He's like, dude, I already beat you. This is already over. He laughs because going back to my message last week, GG. <laughs> and so I want people to understand this. The way of God is not to pray and beat up the enemy like with wrath and anger and saying, devil, I'm coming after you. It's to laugh in his face. And say, dude, do you have any idea what you're up against? There's more with me than there is with you. Greater is he that is in you. Yeah, I'm talking. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Key word, in you. Who is in you? The Holy Spirit. Are you hearing this here? So when you start to feel the despair and whatever, ask the Lord to restore unto you the joy of thy salvation or the joy of Yeshua, and then you can start laughing. Most people, when they feel down, they feel bad about laughing. I tell you the truth. That is not a bad thing. That's a spiritual thing. God is saying you can laugh because I'm laughing at the enemy right now. I'm laughing that the enemy is trying to do this against you because why? He knows I'm going to destroy him. He knows that I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to bless you and give you way more than what you lost. If you don't believe me, go read the story of Job. It was God who said, have you considered my servant Job? But now I look back at it. He was laughing the entire time. It was a joke. Not saying your anguish or your pain is a joke. That's not. To think that your pain and what you're going through can overwhelm the power of Almighty God. That is what's laughable. You think your situation cannot be changed by Almighty God? You don't think that God's love and power and authority cannot change, reform, and even give you more than what you even thought you could get. Learn the ways of God. But the only way to learn them is to have the Holy Spirit. And the final thing right here. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to end it right now. Holy Spirit, Ruha, means breath. And so this is the part. Let's fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So right now. This is the part of the video where if you got your filling of the word of God today, if you feel blessed, then by all means, be dismissed. But if you want more, then stay tuned. Not more of hearing me speak, but more of understanding how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit because we're about to practice it. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to teach you how to do it. And I'll show you. But before anything, those before you leave, before whatever, 
If you have not accepted the Lord Yeshua, but you want to receive this, you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you want to receive this promise, then all you have to do is repeat after me. Say, Lord Yeshua, I come before you now, and I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins, to forgive me of all my unrighteousness. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you came to the earth, that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose on the third day with all power in your hands, and that you are now seated at the right hand of the Father to be an intercessor for me. Lord Yeshua, come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my life, wash me in your blood, and fill me with your spirit. For I decree and declare this day that you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you, my King, for saving me. It is in Yeshua's mighty and precious name. I do pray. Prayer partners and friends, said with me. Amen, amen, amen. If you said that beautiful prayer, welcome to the family of God. He loves you oh so much. It's so...